Hello, BookTube, and welcome to Poetry Thursday, a beleaguered little BookTube tradition that a few channels manage to uphold, uh, where we read and talk about a poem on Thursdays. And I had planned to spend the rest of 2023 exploring a recent big fat anthology I got of contemporary 20th century poetry, a time period where I think poetry met its end and died as a, as a popular public art form and became exclusively, exclusively the niche province, province of the very most pretentious people anywhere in the world and stopped being of any interest to ordinary people. Uh, I was going to explore that book for the rest of 2023, but then Aaron Facer made a Poetry Thursday video in his own quirky Devil May Carol May. He makes his Poetry Thursday videos on Wednesday. Uh, and when he got wind of my plan, he said that I was a, a soy boy cuck, or as he puts it, a soy boy cook, if I didn't read a poem by John Donne today. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I don't want any of the young men on BookTube calling me names, whether it's Aaron Facer or That Reading Guy or Micah Cummins or David Wiley. I don't know who let these vicious, mean girl young men on BookTube in the first place, but I don't want to run afoul of them. So I hauled out the John Dunn, and we're going to read a poem. Uh, we're going to read Elegy Number 7, uh, and it goes like this. Nature's lay idiot, I taught thee to love. And in that sophistry, oh, thou didst prove too subtle. Fool, thou didst not understand the mystic language of eye nor hand, nor couldst thou judge the difference of the air of size, and say, this lies, this sounds despair. Nor by the eye's water call a malady desperately hot or changing feverishly. I had not taught thee then the alphabet of flowers, how they devisefully set, being set and bound up might with speechless secrecy deliver errands mutely and mutually. Remember, since all thy words used to be to every suitor, I, if my friends agree, since household charms thy husband's name to teach were all the love tricks that thy wit could reach, and since an hour's discourse could scarce have made one answer in thee that ill arrayed in broken proverbs and torn sentences. Thou art not by so many duties his, that from the world's common having severed thee, inlaid thee, never, neither to be seen nor see as mine, who have with amorous delicacies refined thee into a blissful paradise. Thy graces and good words my creatures be. I planted knowledge and life's tree in thee, which, oh, shall strangers taste? Must I, alas, frame an enamel plate and drink in glass, chafe wax for other seals, Break a colt's force, and leave him then, being made a ready horse. That is Elegy Number 7 by John Donne, and like so much of his poetry, it is absolutely rife with sexism and absolutely loathsome misogyny. <laughs> that, is, that is a poem in which the narrator of the poem is addressing a young woman who he claims to have made a blissful paradise. You were nothing, basically a barnyard animal. Before I taught you how to talk, how to look, how to arrange the, the language of flowers there is the, what used to be a gigantic lexicon of significances of different flowers in different times, in different blooms, in different arrangements. I, the narrator, is saying, I taught you how to do all those things. I made you into something approaching a human being. When before, you were fit only for little intimacy, intimacy games with your girlfriends around a kitchen table. I made you into more than that. And that gives me possession of you sexually, even when you are now contracted to someone else. That's the last part of the poem, is that the narrator is saying, well, you may be his now, but that doesn't mean that I get, that I have to stop having sex with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I made you. So you're, in a sense, my property, no matter who you're affianced to, no matter who you're contracted to in the view of the world. What, after all, are you expecting? That I would break a colt and then not ride it? <laughs> that, I would, that I would chape away at someone else's sealing wax after I've gone to the bother of sealing this item myself? Mind-boggling. <laughs> Absolutely mind-boggling, especially since at the time that Dunn was writing those poems, poems like them, Scabras, poems like them that are enshrined in English literature, enshrined in, in Penguin classic volumes like this, at the time when he was writing poems like that, 
women were just beginning to claw their way out of the kind of servitude that he's talking about here. Personal, sexual, social, economic servitude. Women were at this time starting to think about maybe writing on their own, under their own name, maybe earning money doing it, who knows? Maybe being, being able to own property without going through the incredibly life-threatening ordeal of having a child and then seeing off your husband. So that you manage to survive into widowhood, okay, well then, I guess we're not expecting you to marry again, if you're, especially if you're a widow of a certain age, and you are running the mill, and you do own the house, so, you know, we'll let it go. <laughs> no, in John Donne's world, at least that John Donne, the young John Donne, no, not at all. They are play, clay playthings for men to shape for their own uses, and after which, imprint much like with sealing wax on something, so that it's never not yours, even if it's contracted to marry someone else. Loathsome, <laughs> absolutely loathsome. The verse itself, sure, first rate. At the time when this poem was most likely written, first rate verse of that kind, of that quality or better, was not exactly uncommon. So, a little, a little John Donne corrective <laughs> to the high tones, of, the tones of high reverence that Aaron Facer used in his own Poetry Thursday video, uh, which is that this guy could be as much of a crap heel as everyone else in his time period. <laughs> so that's your that's your Poetry Thursday, a little John Donne. We will move on, unless I'm commanded by one of these this savage teen brigade. Unless I'm commanded to do otherwise, we will move on to contemporary 20th century poetry next time, <laughs> next Thursday. So I will wrap this up for now, and I will see you then, I hope. <laughs> Thank you.